Nearly 50 years have passed since the first lunar landing of a human. Since then, we have learned a tremendous amount about Earth's nearest neighbor and have never lost interest in it. The South Pole Aitken Basin, which is on the far side of our moon, is one of the largest intact craters in the solar system. Numerous orbiters, including the Chinese lander Chang, 4, and other spacecraft are studying the region, which is the focus of numerous investigations. Now, scientists have found something strange beneath its surface. It's a revelation that confounds scientists even today. What was found growing beneath the surface, and exactly what is happening with the moon that has caused scientists to scramble for answers? Let's find out. A structure that weighs 2.18 quintillion kilos and measures more than 300 kilometers, 186 miles in depth, has been found by planetary scientists. Imagine burying a mass of metal five times the size of Hawaii's big island underground. Approximately that much unexpected bulk was found. The team speculates that the mass may have come from the asteroid that created the crater. The Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory, GRAIL mission of NASA, which monitors minute variations in the Moon's gravitational field, made it feasible to make the discovery. The internal structure of our natural satellite can be investigated using these findings. It turns out that the mass they calculated is sufficient to lower the basin's whole bottom by nearly a kilometer, more than half a mile. That's quite the pull considering the crater has a circumference of about 2,500 kilometers, 1,550 miles. What led to this? The group offers two explanations for the subsurface mass. First, it might be the lingering traces of thick oxides that developed during the last moments of cooling when the moon was covered in prehistoric magma oceans. However, the researchers lack a mechanism to accurately explain how such a layer formed specifically beneath the basin. Why, of all locations, would it be there? The team contends that the bulk may have come from an old impactor instead. The space rock that created the moon's massive basin was probably large enough to have split into multiple layers when it initially formed, giving it a solid metallic core and rocky outer layers like many planets do today. The impactor's metallic core was shattered inside the huge bowl-shaped crater that was created on the moon on the tragic day of its encounter. But the initial crater didn't survive as molten rock partially filled the moon's divot. It still contained the melted remnants of the impactor's core. Understanding the origins of the Moon's South Pole Aitken SPA basin is crucial to understanding how the satellite was formed, regardless of what generated the enormous mass on the far side of the Moon. This basin is without a doubt incredibly intriguing because it is the greatest impact structure that we are aware of in the solar system. Whatever the case, the better we understand the SPA and how it formed, the more we'll understand the early history of the Moon Earth and the inner solar system. The project to send people back to the moon is currently ramping up. The next opportunity for NASA to land American astronauts on the planet's surface is in 2024. The moon's enormous metallic mystery may then be revealed to us in greater detail. The new analysis not only discovered the enigmatic blob, but also retraced the inner rim of the basin's edge, showing that scientists had previously overestimated the crater's size. This is a potentially significant discovery as NASA and other space agencies get ready to launch missions to the basin and the adjacent lunar South Pole. The most recent scientists to draw out these boundaries made use of information from the Clementine mission, which had a gap close to the basin's southern boundary. However, the most recent research made use of more extensive data from LRO and GRAIL, which showed that the crater is around 40 miles larger than previously believed. Overall, the research heightens interest in the South Pole Aitken Basin. It's simply so enigmatic. And by better comprehending this structure, scientists hope to comprehend how bodies form throughout our celestial family. Every planet in our solar system was created by small objects colliding and then growing into larger objects. On Earth, plate tectonics ongoing churn has been progressively eroding the planet's old surface and its record of historic collisions. However, the Moon, which still has a surface that is billions of years old, provides a remarkable record of the cataclysmic events that generated one of the largest known impact basins in our solar system's neighborhood when it was still a baby. 
According to a recent study, the enigmatic grooves that score the lunar surface may have been made by a tiny planet that collided with the moon billions of years ago and was at least as big as New Jersey. And according to researchers, this discovery could provide insight into a turbulent period of impact bombardment that formerly affected Earth and the rest of the inner solar system. Researchers looked at the region around Mare Imbrium, which is Latin for the Sea of Showers. The right eye of the man in the moon is represented by this dark region in the northwest quadrant of the near side of the moon, which is the side that faces Earth. The largest basin on the near side of the moon, the Imbrium Basin, contains Mare Imbrium. The one 160-kilometer-wide, 720-mile basin was thought to have been formed by a massive ancient cosmic impact and then filled with enormous lava lakes before cooling to become dark rock. Grooves and gashes around Mare Imbrium are big enough to be observed with even a tiny telescope from Earth. On the southeast edge of the Imbrium Basin, these features, collectively referred to as the Imbrium Sculpture, are concentrated. Numerous components of the Imbrium Sculpture extend forth from the basin center like the spokes of a wheel. The Imbrium Basin and Imbrium Sculpture were thought to have been formed by a massive asteroid impact around 3.8 billion years ago. It appears that this asteroid was moving from the northwest to the southeast when it impacted the moon at an angle rather than straight on, sending debris in a southeast direction. However, previous research found additional grooves in the Imbrium sculpture that did not radiate from the basin center in addition to the features that did. Instead, it appears that they originated in an area to the northwest of the basin center. The orientations of grooves and elongated secondary craters on the moon together with the positions of the Apollo landing sites, helped researchers predict the trajectories of the material released from the Imbrium impact basin. Instead of forming parallel trends that correspond to the fragments coming from various regions of the Imbrium asteroid rather than ejecta from the moon, one set does not converge. It was really unclear what these additional grooves were for. Nobody was entirely certain of their origin, but Schultz and his co-author David Crawford from Albuquerque, New Mexico's Sandia National Laboratories think they may have found the answer. Their findings imply that a massive asteroid large enough to qualify as a protoplanet or baby planet produced the Imbrium Basin and Imbrium Sculpture. Schultz and Crawford used the vertical gun range at NASA's Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California, to conduct hypervelocity impact experiments to find out more about the event that may have generated the Imbrium. In these trials, a 14-foot, 4.25-meter cannon was used to fire tiny bullets at speeds of up to 11,200 miles per hour, 18,000 kilometers per hour, while impact plates and high-speed cameras captured information on the encounters. The researchers discovered that a high-speed bullet frequently began fragmenting after making contact with a surface during a low-angle collision. The sides and top of the projectile would break off and continue moving quickly along the projectile's original trajectory to scour the surface, while the bottom of the projectile would leave a crater. The grooves from these bits would seem to come from a location that is roughly equivalent to the distance between the projectile's bottom and its top and sides, and is slightly offset from the crater created by the majority of the projectile. The experts hypothesize that pieces of the striking asteroid's top and sides that snapped off as it struck the moon engraved the mysterious grooves of the Imbrium sculpture. Up to 25% of the asteroid in Imbrium may have separated from the actual crash, and several of the pieces completely fled the moon. The size of this Imbrium asteroid was estimated by scientists using computer models that examined these grooves. According to earlier calculations, the Imbrium asteroid was only approximately 50 miles 80 kilometers across. But according to these recent discoveries, the impactor may have actually measured roughly 150 miles 250 kilometers across, or the equivalent of New Jersey's length. Comparison of the impactor's scours from experiments and those from a computer model of an asteroid with a 100-kilometer diameter. Physical mechanisms that affect the projectile's outcome at high speeds were found in lab studies and also apply on a much bigger scale. Actually, that is a low-end estimate. It was possible that it measured up to 300 kilometers, 185 miles. The researchers also discovered that a number of additional basins on the Moon might have been formed by protoplanet impacts that were oblique. For instance, they predicted that asteroids larger than previously thought 
may have formed the Moscovienza and Orientali basins on the Moon's far side, which are each roughly 62 and 68 miles, 100 and 110 kilometers, across. All in all, the researchers speculate that the asteroid belt may have originally been home to many protoplanets. According to Schultz, the huge basins that we can see on the Moon and in other places are the remnants of extinct giants. The researchers stated that collisions with these protoplanets could account for a significant portion of the impacts that pounded the Moon and the rest of the inner solar system between 4.1 billion and 3.7 billion years ago, known as the Late Heavy Bombardment. After impact, thousands of pieces that were torn off the Imbrium asteroid and other protoplanets would have continued to travel through space and strike further targets. These relics from the past may have made a significant contribution to the impact record we observe on the Moon and other terrestrial planets. The Moon, on the other hand, is getting smaller. In addition, scientists have discovered that as our satellite's crust contracts, it tugs on cliff-like fissures on the surface, causing numerous moonquakes. The scarps, which are thought to be no more than 50 million years old, are dispersed across the surface of the Moon in a massive worldwide network. Scarps may have developed as the Moon's interior cooled and contracted, as suggested by their age and dispersion. However, the scientists questioned if scarps were more actively involved in lunar tectonics. Four seismometers on the Apollo expedition recorded measurements for the investigation, which examined 28 moonquakes with magnitudes ranging from 2 to 5 on Earth. According to the study, they calculated the epicenters of the earthquakes using new methods and compared those sites to the locations of the scarp in LRO photos. A thrust fault was found to be the source of eight of the moonquakes because they occurred within 19 miles 31 kilometers, of the fault. The moon was in or close to apogee, the point in its orbit that is furthest from Earth for six of those earthquakes. The possibility of a moonquake occurring increases during apogee due to increased gravitational pressures pulling on the moon's crust and thrust faults. Additionally, evidence from LRO images revealed that the moon is still shrinking, which is tugging on the scarps and causing new moonquakes. These and other intriguing discoveries highlight the necessity of returning to the moon, even though there is still plenty to learn from the Apollo data. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.